to all the family members in the world who came to Shincheonji online seminar, Testimony and Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, welcome. It is nice to meet you. My name is Lee Chaebong, and I'll be your host today. Shincheonji Online Seminar has been going on for about two months since last October, interpreted into various languages. It has been getting much attention by many pastors, theology students, and believers from around the world. The pastors of many churches around the world were especially moved by the teaching of this seminar, which testifies to the reality of the entire book of Revelation. They have sent us messages saying that they would like to share the teaching of Revelation with us, and they are also signing MOU with Shincheonji. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to all those who have given us so much support and interest. Now, before the seminar, we will pray to God the Father in a united heart. Father God, who is holy, we thank you. We give all thanks and glory to you for allowing us and being one with us to open this Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, to the whole world. Everyone who is attending this event believes in you, Father, and in Jesus, and also in the hope which you have promised to give. Please remember and keep in your heart each of the pastors, theology students, and believers who came longing for your kingdom with an earnest desire to understand the book of Revelation. Today, we will receive the testimony of Revelation chapter 20. When the tribe leader, who learned directly from the chairman, the promised shepherd, testifies to the secrets of the kingdom of heaven from Revelation 20, please help all those who hear to understand from the prophecies to the fulfilled realities, so that this may be a time of grace for them to return all things and glory back to you. We believe that it will be a time full of your word and blessings. God, please be with us and receive all glory. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who died for our sins. Amen. We would like to inform you that this online seminar is being conducted with strict compliance with quarantine rules and social distancing guidelines. Following Revelation 19 that we studied last time, today we will learn Revelation 20. Chapter 20, entitled The Spirits of the Martyrs and Those Who Participate in the First Resurrection, tells how Satan, who had been ruling over the world for 6,000 years, is seized, and how the resurrection and judgment come. What is the true meaning of resurrection? What is judgment? And how it is executed? Along with the questions many have been curious about will be answered in a clear way today. Now, let us welcome up Lee young no the head of Busan James Tribe, who will deliver the message today. Hello. To all the pastors and congregants participating in the Shincheonji Revelation Seminar, it's nice to meet you. I am Lee Young No, the tribe leader of Busan James Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, established in the name of James, a disciple of Jesus and the son of Zebedee. Following the content of Revelation chapter 19 last time, today's lecture will be regarding the words of Revelation chapter 20. Today's lecture will be titled, The Spirits of the Martyrs and the First Resurrection of the Living. Resurrection is one of the hopes that we have as believers, correct? 
So if you are a believer, isn't it something you must absolutely know? I hope that all the pastors who are listening to this lecture today will first hear and understand these words and then teach the many members well who follow you. Today's title is The Spirits of Martyrs and the First Resurrection of the Living. So I will clearly testify to when the re first resurrection will take place and who will participate and what events will take place after a thousand years which are promised in the Bible. Before we get into the main topic, let's take a look at the summary of Revelation chapter 20. The location of events of Revelation chapter 20 is the wedding banquet of the Lamb in Revelation 19. In other words, the temple of the tabernacle of testimony. Also, the time of fulfillment of Revelation chapter 20 will occur after the event of inviting the guests of spirits and flesh to the wedding banquet. After the wedding banquet of spirit and flesh in Revelation chapter 19, the content of chapter 20 is regarding the souls that have been beheaded and with those who did not worship the beast or the image and did not receive the mark of the beast on their foreheads or hands, where together they will reign for a thousand years. And as it will happen in a thousand years, there will be the final judgment after a thousand years, and everyone will be separated into eternal life versus eternal punishment. The following is a composition of Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 consists of events that will take place within a thousand years and events that will take place after. First of all, what will happen within a thousand years? First, the content of the dragon being captured in the abyss appears, and then the event of the first resurrection, when the spirit and the flesh become one. And the event that will take place a thousand years later is the judgment of the spirits, where the dead will be judged according to their deeds based on what is written in this book. And it is composed of the contents of the final judgment separated into eternal life versus eternal punishment. As such, chapter 20 of Revelation will be the final chapter where all the events of Revelation will come to an end, including the judgment a thousand years after. Now let's go into the main topic, where verses 1 to 3 will be about the dragon being captured in the abyss. First, let's read verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. When we see the words of verse 1, it says, And I saw. So there is a person, I, who sees an angel coming down out of heaven with the key to the abyss and a great chain. Who is this I? We have learned many times in each chapter about who the person I is that has seen and heard the events of Revelation at its location. First of all, the book of Revelation was recorded 2,000 years ago by Apostle John. Apostle John recorded the words of prophecy which he had seen in a vision, but did not see the reality of the prophecy being fulfilled. So when this prophecy is fulfilled, it's not Apostle John from 2,000 years ago, but a new John who is the person who saw and heard everything directly at the location of the events where the pro prophecy of Revelation was fulfilled as recorded in Revelation chapter 1 verse 2 and Revelation chapter 28, 22 verse 8 and verse 16. The prophecies recorded by the prophets of the Old Testament were fulfilled at the first coming. Also, what Jesus prophesied in the New Testament will all be fulfilled today at the second coming. When this New Testament book of Revelation is fulfilled, the new John, who has seen and heard all the realities at the location of fulfillment, is now the messenger of Jesus and will become the promised shepherd of the New Testament who testifies to the realities of the book of Revelation. I will testify about the key to the abyss and the great chain that the angel brought. First, let's look at the key to the abyss. And if you look at the term for abyss in Chinese characters, it means a bottomless pit, which you cannot find. This refers to Hades or hell. hell Hades or hell refers to the place where Satan dwells. 
and this key to this abyss, before we can understand this, we need to know the key first. To speak about the meaning of key, there are various expressions of key in the Bible. The key to heaven, the key to knowledge, the key to David. Just as a key is a tool to open something, it says in the Bible that the secrets of heaven are hidden in parables. So if you say the key to heaven, wouldn't the wisdom to unlock the hidden secrets of heaven be the key to heaven? Conversely, if you say the key to the abyss, then this is the key to hell. That is, wisdom to know the secrets of Satan becomes a key to the abyss. With this key to the abyss, Satan then can be captured and bound, or be able to release Satan. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, the Son of Man, Jesus, holds the keys of death and Hades. Also, starting from chapter 9, verse 1, there is a content of a star that had fallen from the sky and given the key to the abyss and bring out Satan's destroyers from that abyss. And in today's main reference chapter, Revelation chapter 20, again, the angel comes with the key to the abyss and sees Satan and bound him. But it says that this angel is coming not only with the key to the abyss, but also with a great chain. Aren't you curious what this chain is that can seize and bind the dragon? If you think about it, the Bible says that scripture cannot be broken. So if you know that the dragon is incorrect and use the Bible to testify regarding it, then the dragon will not be able to escape and be bound by the word of testimony. The word that is testified with the Bible this will be the chain that binds the dragon. So in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it speaks of the few brothers who fought and overcame the group of the dragon with the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. So you can understand that the great chain that bound the dragon is the word of testimony. After Adam's sin, God left this earth and Satan has taken over this world. Today, in this era, Jesus showed to new John, the promised shepherd, the identity and mystery of Satan, who has been ruling this world for 6,000 years, and by making it known, is able to overcome with the word of testimony that reveals the identity of Satan. Next, let's read verses 2 to 3. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is a devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. It is the content of the dragon being bound for a thousand years by the key of the abyss and the great chain brought by the angel. The captured dragon is said to be the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan. The dragon, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, says, He leads the whole world astray. Just as it refers to the spirit of Satan, the evil spirit who deceives all nations. The seized dragon is called that ancient serpent. Then when it speaks about the serpent, where do you think of? Yes, it is a serpent in the Garden of Eden that appeared in Genesis chapter 3. And since this entity is called Satan or the devil, the true nature of this dragon is that it is Satan or the devil. Satan the devil is also referred to as an angel who has sinned in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4. He was originally a created being, created by God. But because of his own arrogance, this, cre this created being wanted to become God and therefore became Satan the devil. Looking at this content, we can see that Satan the devil has worked from the time of Adam in Genesis to the time of Revelation. That means that Satan the devil entered and worked through the serpent in Genesis and even the Jewish pastors at the first coming. Therefore, in Matthew chapter 23, verse 33, Jesus taught and testified that the scribes and the Pharisees were snakes and vipers. 
And at the time of Revelation, the group of the dragon, the beast with seven heads and ten horns, which are the destroyers, are again used by Satan the devil, who has opposed the work of God in every era. In this way, Satan, who has deceived all nations for 6,000 years, will finally be captured in the book of Revelation. This can also be confirmed in Luke chapter 8, when the demon at the first coming appeared before Jesus and asked him not to command him into the abyss. This means that Satan the devil will be captured not at the time of the first coming, but at the fulfillment of Revelation, just like the words we are learning today. And the main reference says that Satan the devil will be bound for a thousand years, thrown into the abyss, locked and sealed over it. The meaning of sealed is that it is stamped and sealed so that no one can open it. In the same way, the meaning of throwing the dragon into the abyss, locking it and sealing it would mean to prevent the dragon from coming out anymore. It says that the dragon is bound and sealed in the abyss and therefore can no longer deceive the nations, but will be released again for a while, only after the thousand years have passed, to deceive again. Then what the dragon will do when he comes out of the abyss after a thousand years will be explained a little later in verse 7. After 6, year, about 6,000 years ago, God left the world because of Adam who betrayed. And since then, the devil has ruled over this world. However, what we need to know is that today, at the time of fulfillment of Revelation, one who overcomes promised in Revelation fought and overcame the dragon with the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. And by the dragon being bound in Revelation chapter 20, all wars must come to an end. And as it says in Revelation chapter 19 verse 6, it is the beginning of the era of God's kingdom of heaven where God who is life reigns, not the devil. If we organize the contents of verses 1 to 3 again, it will be the content of capturing Satan the dragon who has deceived all nations and throwing him into the abyss for a thousand years, locking it and sealing it so that he cannot come out again. The next verses from verses 4 to 6 will be the contents of the first resurrection in which the spirit and the flesh become one. Let's read verses 4 to 6 together. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, for they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with Him for a thousand years. First, in verse 4, there are those who sit on thrones and judge. So who are they? If we see in Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, Jesus, who received the authority to judge from God at the first coming, promised the twelve disciples, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on His glorious throne, you who have followed Me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The throne mentioned here is the throne of the twelve tribes of new spiritual Israel, as seen in Revelation chapter 7, which is created when the world is renewed, that is, at the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. And those who sit on these thrones and have the authority to judge are first Jesus' twelve disciples, and they become one with the twelve tribe leaders of new spiritual Israel that will be created here on earth. And they are the spirit and flesh who are within the structure of God's throne as seen in Revelation chapter 4. They have been given the authority to judge from God. 
And when they judge, it will be done by the words written in the Bible, according to John chapter 12, verse 48. Next is the most important part of today's content. It is regarding the first resurrection. What is the first resurrection, and who are those who partake in it? First in verse 4, it says that there are souls of those who have been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and the Word of God. They are the souls of those who have been beheaded. So these are the spirits of martyrs. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, although the spirits of the martyrs who were killed because of the Word of God and the testimony they had suffer martyrdom in the body, they will be, there will be a time where they will resurrect again. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 to 16, God promised that those who have fallen asleep in Jesus, the spirits of the martyrs, will be brought along with Jesus. These are those whom we saw in Revelation chapter 19 last time. It was expressed as birds being invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. In the Bible, a bird is compared to a spirit. First, among those who partake in the first resurrection are the spirits who are martyred in heaven. And secondly, are those who have not worshipped the beast or his image, nor do they receive the mark on their foreheads or on their hands and come to life. You must have listened to this when you learned Revelation chapter 13. It is the content of destroyers that are like beasts who enter the tabernacle temple of God, setting up idols to worship and giving them the mark of 666 and trampling them for 42 months. First of all, in Psalms chapter 49, verse 20, he says, A man who has riches without understanding is like the beasts that perish. In a nutshell, people are figuratively compared to beasts. However, the beasts in the main reference are talking about the destroyers who devour the tabernacle of the chosen people that betrayed in Revelation chapter 12 and chapter 13. And that organization was the organization of the seven heads that came out of the sea. These are the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center that devour the tab temple of the tabernacle temple in chapter 13. Next is regarding idols. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 18, it speaks of a false teacher as an image or idol. So a false prophet that is like a false teacher becomes an idol. As the idol that made them worship, the reality was to become the 17 evangelists of the tabernacle temple. Next, there is the mark of the beast, and that mark was 666. And the reality of 666 is a beast that came up from the earth, as seen in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And under a pseudonym, the snake, Mr. Mo. And because he taught Satan's lies, he is referred to 666 by expression. Ultimately, these are the entities who belong to Satan who destroyed the tabernacle temple at the time of Revelation. And this was the content that was confirmed one by one when the testimony of Revelation chapter 13 was given previously. Then there are those who have not worshipped the beast or his image and have not received the mark. Then who are these that are living? To understand, when one speaks of death, there is physical death, but there is also spiritual death. In Revelation chapter 6, the chosen people of the tabernacle temple who betrayed were thrown out and hid in caves, mountains, and rocks of Gentiles. And in chapters 8 and 9, their spirits were killed one-third at a time. At that time, those who lived and was not killed in spirit became those who overcame the beast, his image, and the number of his name in the tabernacle of heaven in Revelation chapter 12 and 13. And there are those who are victorious who gathered at the temple of the Tabernacle of Testimony in Revelation chapter 15. 
Also, looking at Revelation chapters 14 and 7, after the work of betrayal and destruction, those who are harvested and sealed becomes the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. So let's organize what we have seen so far regarding who will participate in the first resurrection. Due to the seven stars, seven messengers of the tabernacle temple of heaven betraying, the beast-like destroyers came up from the sea, which were false pastors that invaded into the tabernacle. And when the one who is referred to as the beast of the earth set up idols to be like false, 17 false teachers and gave them the mark on their foreheads and, and their hands, it's at that time there were those who did not worship the beast or the idol, nor did they receive the mark and fought and overcome, came and lived. These people became those who are victorious that gathered in the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony in Revelation 15. They are those that are clothed with the spirits of martyrs and became one. This is how it occurs. This means that they will be clothed with the spirits of martyrs and become one, so that they do not die in flesh, but will live and participate in the first resurrection with Jesus, and they will live for a thousand years. Therefore, there are spirits and flesh that participate in the first resurrection. First, they are the souls of the, the, of the martyrs and, and the living are those who, do, who have not worshipped the beast and the image and have not received the mark. These are the flesh. In this way, when the work of the beast in Revelation 13 occurs, they will not receive the mark of the beast, nor die, but live and participate in the first resurrection with Jesus and reign for a thousand years. However, these people are flesh, not spirits. So how can the flesh live with Jesus for a thousand years? Within the period of 1,000 years, the dragon, who is the ruler of death, is now captured in the abyss and cannot work. For that reason, a 1,000 years is the period in which people are able to live and not die. What we must remember as we look toward this hope is what the martyrs went through. They experienced all sorts of hardships and even suffered martyrdom, didn't they? If that is the case, then I hope that we, who are believers today, will make every effort to fight and overcome Satan as much as the martyrs, live without dying, and become the reality of the first resurrection and reign and live for a thousand years. So I will speak a little more about the first resurrection according to the Bible. If you look at the words of John chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. This is the promise of resurrection and eternal life. And Apostle Paul also explains well in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 regarding the resurrection of the dead and the transformation of the living. If you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42 to 44, to see how those who have died physically will be resurrect resurrected, it says, The body that is sown perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. To plant here means to die. And those who have died physically are dead in flesh. But when the time of resurrection comes, it is promised that they will rise again in a spiritual body, not a physical body that has already experienced death. So to be resurrected with the spiritual body means that the corrupted human existence now returns to the likeness and image of God. Then let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54, to see when and how this resurrection will take place. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, 
and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Yes, based on what we've read, when does it happen? There are changes that happen in a flash at the sound of the last trumpet. The dead will be raised and perishable, and those who live in the body will change. For when the perishable will clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, so that the saying that is written will come true, that death will be swallowed up in victory. This is explaining regarding the body being clothed with the spirit at the last trumpet. In other words, the spirit and the body become one, which is the resurrection and eternal life. So when does this happen? It happens at the last trumpet. In the book of Revelation, there are a total of seven trumpets, and the last will be the seventh trumpet. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, at the sound of the seventh, last trumpet, the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. Also in Revelation chapter 10, verse 7, it says, when the seventh angel blows the trumpet, the mystery of God is accomplished and fulfilled just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Therefore, the promise of rever resurrection and eternal life in 1 Corinthians 15 fulfills at the time of Revelation's fulfillment. So when the book of Revelation is fulfilled, the people gathered at the wedding banquet of the Lamb in Revelation 19, that is, the temple of tabernacle of testimony, in other words, those who overcame and lived by not receiving the mark of the beast are clothed with the spirits of martyrs. In Revelation chapter 20, which we are learning today, this is called the first resurrection. And it's at that time, death will come to an end. To summarize, the era in which first resurrection takes place is at the time of fulfillment of Revelation, that is, after the wedding banquet of spirit and flesh in Revelation chapter 19. And the location of the wedding banquet of the Lamb, where the events unfold, is from the temple of tabernacle of testimony. And those that enter into the first resurrection are the spirits and the flesh. The spirits are the spirits of martyrs, and together with the flesh of those who overcame and lived that did not worship the beast or his image and have not received the mark of the beast, will enter into first resurrection together. And those who take part in the first resurrection are blessed. So what blessing will they receive? As mentioned before, the blessing they receive will be eternal life because as we saw earlier, death has been swallowed up and will come to an end at that time. And the second death has no power over them, it says. The second death here refers to the punishment of hell that the soul receives after the body dies. The reason why those who enter into first resurrection have eternal life and second death has no power over them is because they are those who have been set free from sin through the blood of Jesus. Therefore, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 to 12, it says that those whose sins are forgiven are those who have written the law of the new covenant in their minds and hearts. Because the book of Revelation is the conclusion of the New Covenant, that is, the New Testament, those who are sealed by keeping the prophecies of this book of Revelation and the reality in their hearts today are blessed with this kind of blessing. Also, those who take part in the first resurrection become kingdom of priests and reign for a thousand years. This means that the people who partake in the first resurrection live for a thousand years in the millennial city, and this is called the first resurrection. Since there is no dragon, the devil, who is the ruler of death, in the millennial city, there is no death, and they can live for a thousand years without dying by marrying the spirits of martyrs. This millennial city will be explained in detail again from verse 9. To all the pastors and congregants who are listening to the word, 
Do you not want to become the reality of the first resurrection? What must we do to receive this precious blessing? In the book of Revelation, the place, time, participa participants, and the blessing to be received regarding the first resurrection are all determined. So I hope that the words of the book of Revelation, the law of the new covenant, will be engraved and sealed in our hearts and our minds so that we all become the reality of this first resurrection. So if those who partake in the first resurrection receive the blessing of eternal life and reign for a thousand years, in contrast, there are the rest of the dead other than the spirits of martyrs who do not participate in this first resurrection. And after a thousand years, they will be judged before the throne of God and will be divided into eternal life versus eternal punishment. This will be explained in verse 12. Next are verses 7 through 15. As a dragon is captured and then released again, he'll do the work of deceiving Gog and Magog, and the spirits will be judged before the judgment seat of God. This is the content of the final judgment divided into eternal life versus eternal punishment. First, let's read only verses 7 through 10. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who received them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. It says that the dragon, Satan, will be released after the thousand years. Let's first take a look at what the period of a thousand years is. If you look at what we have learned today from Revelation chapter 20, the period of Satan being bound in the abyss was a thousand years. And the period of those who partake in the first resurrection where they reign is also for a thousand years. In other words, it is a period of capturing and locking up Satan who has ruled the world for 6,000 years but also healing all the deceived nations with the words of the Old and New Testaments. In other words, it is a period during which those who partake in the first resurrection will reign. So when the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison again. If you take a look at what Satan does when he is released from his prison, it says that he deceives Gog and Magog. So then who are Ma Gog and Magog that will be deceived? In Ezekiel chapter 38, Gog and Magog were Gentiles in the Old Testament era. But this content was figuratively speaking about those who will surround the city that God loves. This city was talking about the millennial city, where the people who partake in the first resurrection mentioned earlier reigned for a thousand years. Regarding the city, Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 says that there are those who wash their robes in order to enter the city. However, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 15, it says that there are those who are outside the city, which are the dogs, those who pra practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and liars. In this way, those outside the city are those who fall under Gog and Magog, mentioned in the main reference. Since it says outside the city, they are those that do not belong to God, but are mere flesh. Speaking about those outside the millennial city, so in this way, Satan gathers those outside the city who are like Gog and Magog to attack the millennial city of God. In the main reference, the city he loves refers to the millennial city. This is a city of those who will partake in the first resurrection. So then, where in the world is this millennial city? Aren't you curious about this too? At the time of fulfillment of Revelation, God and the spiritual world of heaven descends and comes down onto His kingdom that is created here on earth. Like this, the millennial city must exist on this earth. 
Just like there are cities like Seoul and Busan in Korea, the millennial city is here on this earth. Because there are those outside the millennial city, which are the worldly people, which is where the worldly people live. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 to 15, it is written that there is inside the city and outside the city. Then outside the city is Gog and Magog. Then where do you think God is among the two? inside or outside. It is recorded that God and the holy city New Jerusalem will come down to new heaven and new earth. So it means that they will become one with the people of the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, which is new heaven and new earth. And the reason that this holy city and heaven became one with the saints here on this earth was because they married in Revelation chapter 19. And at this wedding banquet, the birds gathered and also the flesh, that is, people, also come. This is a place where spirit and flesh gather together. And those gathered here belong to God. So God is there, Jesus is there, and so the angels and also the spirits of martyrs gather and come down to that millennial city, which is like a resting place. And in the millennial city, the spirits of martyrs and those who are alive will reign for a thousand years. And as mentioned before, in the millennial city, there is no dragon, the devil, who is the ruler of death, and therefore, there is no death, but will be able to live for a thousand years. But now, when a thousand years pass, Satan will come out and deceive where? He will deceive Gog and Magog outside the city and surround the millennial city. To surround the city that God loves means to surround it, to oppose and attack the saints in this city. After a thousand years, Gog and Magog, who were deceived by Satan, will surround the camp of the saints and the city God loves. But at that time, it is written that fire will come down from heaven and consume them. So this Gog, who was deceived by the devil and the flesh like Magog, that is, all those outside the city will be judged by fire in this way. Not only that, the devil that deceives is also thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented forever and ever. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, the place called the lake of fire and sulfur where the devil enters is recorded as the second death. The second death is the punishment of hell that the soul receives after the body dies. It is recorded that after a thousand years, Gog and Magog, who are outside the city, will also be judged, as well as the devil who deceived them. Those who are then within the thousand-year city, inside the millennial city, will not be deceived by Satan or be destroyed. So then, what is the reason? They are those who fully understand the words of Revelation, and because they know when Satan will be released from his prison, so therefore they will no longer be deceived or fall into captivity. In this way, after a thousand years, the dragon that, which is captured will be released from his prison and does its work again, which is to deceive Gog and Magog that's outside the city, and set up a battle with the saints of the millennial city. However, because of God's judgment, fire will come down from heaven, and Gog and Magog, who will be deceived, as well as the devil who deceives, will be judged. In the same way, the devil and Gog and Magog come out after a thousand years to start a war, but they will be judged by the destruction of their flesh by fire. So what follows is the content of verses 11 through 15. Now even the devil will be judged and disappear, and the flesh of Gog and Magog will be judged and disappear, 
So then what remains is the judgment of their spirits that still exist after physical death. It should be noted that the judgment in this chapter is different from the judgment of the flesh in Revelation chapter 6 and 16 and Revelation chapter 18, where the chosen people who betrayed and the destroyers were judged. Let's read verses 11 to 15. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is a book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. In verse 11, Judgment will be brought down from a great and white throne. But first, the throne being white means that the throne is righteous and clean. And there is one who sits on the white throne to judge, and that is God. In this way, it will be the content of the people who have died that will stand before the throne of God, great and small, and will be judged according to their deeds with the open books and the book of life. So the dead who are being judged here are the spirits of all who have died physically from the creation of the world. And it is said that there are books that are opened when judging the dead. As in Daniel chapter 7 verse 10, the books that are opened when judgment is made are based on the 66 books of the Bible, the law of heaven, and God's words of the Bible. And there's another book called The Book of Life. You must have already learned about this Book of Life well from previous lectures. When you see the words in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12, and verse 21, you will see, To the one who overcomes, God, and Jesus, and the spiritual world of heaven will come. And to the one who overcomes, Jesus will give the right to sit together with him on his throne. The heaven where God is has come to the place where the overcomer is. So the place where the overcomer is has become heaven, the kingdom of God, correct? That is the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in Revelation chapter 15, verse 5, the location where the overcomer whom the spiritual realm of heaven has come. And writing my name in the church registry led by the overcomer is to write my name in the book of life. Those whose names are written in the Book of Life will enter the holy city where God dwells. But those whose names are not written in the Book of Life will be judged as recorded in verse 15. After a thousand years, when these words are fulfilled, those who have died will stand before the throne of God and be judged according to their deeds that is recorded in the Bible. In Romans chapter 14, verse 11 to 12, it says, Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to God, so then every man will give an account of himself to God. In this way, when the time of the final judgment comes, all deeds will be revealed before God. And according to those deeds, they will be judged, according to what is written in the books. As in John chapter 5, verse 29, those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. That is, all the spirits will be judged and divided into eternal life or eternal punishment. So at the time of judgment, it is recorded that all the dead, great and small, will stand before the throne of God. Among them, it says that the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. So then who, were, who are the dead that were in the sea? In Daniel chapter 7, verse 3 and verse 17, 
says that the sea is referred to as a world. So it is the dead in the world that is like the sea that are given up. And it means that even the dead who belong to Satan, who is a ruler of death, will be given up. In this way, the judgment will take place after a thousand years, will be the judgment that the spirits of the physically dead will receive. And death and Hades were also thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. The reason the lake of fire is called the second death is because it is the punishment of hell where the spirit is punished after the flesh dies. It is said that only, not only the books, but also the book of life were opened at this last judgment, and anyone whose name is not written in the book of life will go into the lake of fire called the second death. Likewise, after a thousand years, there is God's final judgment, and Gog and Magog outside the millennial city will be consumed by fire. And also, Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, and the dead will be judged with the words of the Bible and the book of life according to their deeds. They will be judged, and even death and Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire. So when this happens, Satan and death will disappear. So then what remains will, then will be only eternal life. So today, I explained Revelation chapter 20 regarding the event of capturing the dragon, the work of the first resurrection that will occur within a thousand years, and to the judgment that will take place after a thousand years. Everyone, this book of Revelation was hidden as a secret and mystery that no one knew before it was fulfilled. But when it fulfilled, the truth is revealed because the reality is revealed so that no one can lie. So if anyone adds or subtracts from this book of Revelation, no one can go to heaven. And if one understands and believes this book of Revelation, one can. First and foremost, I hope that the pastors of all churches will hear and understand these words and teach the congregants well. So I'll summarize the contents of today's main reference and conclude. Today in this era is a time of fulfillment of the book of Revelation, and the dragon who is a ruler of death, who has deceived all nations for 6,000 years, is captured and bound in the abyss, and sealed for a thousand years, so that the devil can now be stopped from deceiving. And now the era of God's kingdom of heaven, where God, who is life, reigns. His, his reign begins. So in Revelation chapter 20, which we learned today, in the thousand-year period, there is inside and outside the city. And there is a work of entering into the first resurrection. So those who participate in the first resurrection are spirits of martyrs. And also, those in the flesh who do not receive the mark of the beast, but has become and belong to the twelve tribes that belong to God by being sealed with the seal of God, they become one together and live for a thousand years. And after a thousand years, judgment will come on Gog and Magog and on the spirits of the dead who are mere flesh. And this millennial city will be the kingdom of priests of the first resurrection and will reign on earth for a thousand years. So the hope of believers is heaven and eternal life. However, this kingdom of heaven and eternal life are not simply obtained, but like those who partake in the first resurrection as we learned today, we must see and believe that those who understand and believe this promise, keep it, and practice it are the ones that will gain the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Today, we, we spoke about Revelation chapter 20. Today, the prophecies of God's new covenant revelation and its fulfillment are being testified to the whole world today through the promised shepherd of Shincheonji who have seen and heard the events of Revelation and the 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji. Until now, many pastors from all over the world are agreeing to sign the MOU with Shincheonji to learn this word in more detail. If we understand and believe the words of this revelation that have been fulfilled today, we will become one in God. All pastors attending this seminar, 
Now I hope that we can become one in God and Jesus and in the Word, transcending national borders, races, and religions. We will end here, and once again, let's shout aloud, we are one. We are one. Thank you so much for listening to the word to the very end. Let's end with prayer. Father God, who is a creator, we truly thank you. We offer you our heartfelt, gra genuine gratitude for your abounding love and grace. We offer infinite thanks to you that the prophecy of the revelation that you have promised has fulfilled and is fulfilling the midst of this earth and its reality is revealed. In addition, we thank you for the word of fulfillment of the new covenant of Revelation that the promised shepherd of Shincheonji and also the 12 tribe leaders today are testifying for the whole world to hear. And we sincerely thank you, Father God, for guiding the hearts and the footsteps of many pastors of the world and the congregants to the word. In the past, when we did not know you or your word, we cannot become one, and there are quarrels and strife, but you are one God, and there is only one Bible. So please be with us so all people in the world can now realize the words of fulfillment of the new covenant that have been fulfilled today and keep them in our hearts so that we can be your true children and enter the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. Father God, the world is in such pain and suffering because of a sudden illness. So in times like this, the only thing we can depend on and hope is for you and your word. So Father God, guide us so that our faith may not be shaken, so that we may endure to the very end and move forward. And Lord, give us strength so that a world of peace, peace, freedom, and love where you reign completely, where there is no more death and pain, can be quickly established on this earth. Father God, please be with us so that we can all follow these words as a path to enter the kingdom of heaven and eternal life by allowing grace and inspiration in every heart of each of these people who are hearing the word today. We offer you all thanks and glory for being with us and guiding us through this time today. And we earnestly believe and pray in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ who lives and works in all these words. Amen. Yes, thank you so much. As God's tabernacle comes down to His people and Shincheonji, 12 tribes, what happens? There is no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. God's work of restoration, in which there is no more death, becomes fulfilled today. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. He said, it is done. This means that God makes prophecies and He fulfills them. Just as you've seen in the video, Revelation 21 will be our next topic of the seminar, which will be testified by John Tribe Leader Lee ki won The seminar will become available at the same time as today's seminar. We only have two chapters left in the book of Revelation to go over. Please watch until the very end so you can fully perceive God's true will recorded in the book of Revelation. I will also be praying for you. How was the seminar for you today? Did you feel refreshed in your heart with the clear testimony of the Word? It is because the promised shepherd who has a complete understanding of the prophecies and fulfillment of Revelation along with the four Gospels is with Shincheonji that we are able to give such a clear testimony confidently. We're all believers of God and Jesus and the same Bible is the standard of our life of faith. Shincheonji is always open to anyone who loves God's Word. If you have any questions about today's content of Revelation, 
or anything about Shincheonji Church and its teaching, please don't hesitate to call the number on the screen. We especially ask the pastors who like to sign MOU with Shincheonji to give us a call. We will answer all of your questions kindly. We will finish today's portion of the seminar with the Lord's Prayer as we give all glory and thanks to God who allowed us this seminar to take place for the whole world to become one under the Word of Truth. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This completes today's Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment, of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Thank you everyone for staying with us until the very end.